Hey guys, it's Hyun again with another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the symbols and the library. This one is super important guys, so uh, try not to miss this tutorial. Um, after this video, you're going to be uh, animating a lot faster, you're going to be utilizing your skills better, and just your overall flash knowledge is going to be a lot better. So you want to impress turquoise? then you're going to want to stick with this video guys. As long as you stick with me, we're going to start sticking and we're going to start believing and then the stick- Alright guys, so today we're going to be covering uh, four different sections. Uh, we're going to first learn about the symbols, uh, how to make a symbol, and then we're going to talk about the different types of symbols that you can use and how to apply them. And then we're going to talk about how to use the library, and then after that, we're going to apply everything that we learned at the end uh, with an example animation. So let's get started. All right, so you're probably asking yourself, what exactly is a symbol and how do I make a symbol? Well, to tell you the truth, a symbol can be anything. So it can be a brush stroke, it can be uh, a line, it can be a fill, it can be anything that you make in Flash. As long as you highlight it and you press F8, this is how you make a symbol. So let's just, uh, let's make a little stick figure here. And um, let's highlight it. So we'll draw a box around it. And then we'll press F8. And this will bring the convert to symbol window up. And then you'll have some options. You'll have the uh, movie clip button graphic, and then you'll be able to select the name. And the two main things that we're gonna be focusing on today is the movie clip and the graphic. These are the two types of symbols that you're gonna be using a lot in animation. So for now, let's just do movie clip and let's name this guy um, stick and push okay. And you'll notice the first thing is that there's this blue box around the symbol that you just made. And that means that it is a symbol and um, you'll notice that you can't really edit a symbol um, on the outside. So you can try to do this, but it'll just select the whole thing. And um, like compared to a normal brush stroke uh, stick figure here, you'll notice that you can actually, you know, break this thing apart and stuff and move it around. While in a symbol, you can't do that. Everything, everything is grouped into one object. And you're gonna hear people say symbol and you're gonna hear people say object, um, but they're both uh, pretty much the same term. Um, so if I say object, then I'm, I'm basically saying symbol, okay? So a lot of people use this for uh, many different kinds of stuff. So like um, you can do weapons, say this is a sword, <laughs> just pretend it's a sword and uh, people are gonna convert this to a symbol so they can, um, animate this without worrying about editing uh, editing stuff so um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of diversity uh, while using symbols um, and the thing is you can group different types of symbols together as well so here you have two symbols right so now you can just kind of like collect was it highlight these two and then push f8 again and then convert this into a symbol again, and this will group these two symbols together. So it's a it, people use it as a grouping tool mostly as well. Um, for the hell of it, let's just uh, group these guys together. So this is like a random stick figure guy. These are two symbols grouped into one symbol. So you can just highlight all this and push F8 again, and uh, push OK, and then it'll just group all these together, and you can't edit these. All right. Um, you can undo this by uh, doing Control B, and that means uh, break apart. And this this will break apart the symbol uh, by one step. So here you'll see this is this is free again, but then these are still grouped together. And if you want to break these apart, you just do the same thing: Control B, and this will break apart these two symbols. And if you highlight this, Control B, this will go back to its original uh, brush stroke uh, stick figure. Now another super useful thing that you can do with symbols is that you can animate inside of symbols and uh, the symbol will store that animation and you can uh, move it around and like reuse it whenever you want. Now this is, this is where it gets a little bit complicated, 
but um, I'll try to break it down so it's, uh, it's it's super easy to understand. So remember before when I said um, you couldn't um, edit uh, symbols? Well, let's let's convert this back into a symbol. We'll make this. Uh, we'll make it a graphic just so it's easier to understand this. Um, so now, like you can't edit it, right? But what you can do is you can double click inside of this symbol. And so if you double click it, you'll notice that the uh, the timeline kind of resets. It turns back into one layer and it's just one thing. But if you notice here, everything in the background is grayed out except the symbol. And now this is back into its original brush uh, stick figure and you can edit it. So uh, let's let's try to let's, let's like decapitate this guy just temporarily, and then um, you'll notice here that it says symbol four, and this is like this basically means that you're inside this symbol and you're you're able to edit only this symbol. So if you click back here, you'll go back to scene one, which is the main which is the main uh, this, this scene and you'll see that this kind of saved what I did inside that symbol so if I click this everything is still grouped together and I can't edit it but I edit it inside the symbol so when I double click this again just uh, let's how, let's put this guy back together <laughs> and there you go I ed I can edit this symbol but I can't edit anything else you'll see how everything's grayed out and I can't select it is because I'm inside this symbol. So let's go back again. And now this guy is back together. So this is another way to um, edit symbols. But that's not the main point. The main point is, let's go back inside this guy. And you'll see that this timeline resets. This is because this is the timeline for inside this specific symbol. So this means that you can animate here. So uh, like what I talked about earlier, Let's uh, let's make a small animation for this guy. Um, let's turn on the, the the onion skin so I can see what I'm animating. And then let's uh, let's just animate this dude. Um, just doing a dance, or let's just do him like jumping. Okay, so here's a simple, you know, uh, like, a, like a two frame animation here, right? So he's jumping for joy. Um, and then if you go outside of that symbol, let's go back to the, the main uh, stage and you'll see, oh, well, let's just, let's just extend this uh, frame. You can see that this symbol is now animated, but nothing else is animated. And this is all on the same like layer. So only this animation or the symbol is playing what's inside um, or what I animated inside this symbol. So if I double click this again, this goes into the symbols timeline. So this is the animation that is inside this symbol. I, I, like, I hope that makes sense for you guys, um, but don't worry if you don't get it now because I'll explain a lot more later. This just uh, shows you that um, you can animate inside of symbols. So you can move this guy around wherever you want, but he'll still be animated, you see? All right, so let's talk about the library. If you noticed, uh, when I made those um, the symbols, you'll notice that on the right side, it shows the, every single symbol that I made. So you see, the, there's that first one that I made, the stick. Um, symbol one was that sword that I made, and then this one as well, when I grouped those two symbols together. And then this one, when I grouped everything together, so it saves all these symbols inside the library. And um, what's great about this is um, you'll be able to reuse symbols anytime um, you want inside your animation. So if I just select this and say I wanted to use this again, um, you can just click here and then drag this onto the stage. And there, like, you have this again, you can use this. So this is a, a very, very useful tool when you want to reuse certain assets in, in, your, in your animation. So do you guys remember that, um, that two-frame animation we made earlier? Um, that gets, that, that, since that's a symbol, it gets stored in the library as well. So you'll see it as symbol four. And uh, you can drag this out into the stage again. And uh, let's just expand this just for uh, demonstration's sake. 
and now this animation was stored inside that symbol so it will play out and you'll be able to see that animation and reuse it wherever you need to which makes it super useful for uh, for animating so like uh, an example would be like you know if Mikko was doing if, if he was animating effects he can just animate a single effect inside of a, a symbol and he can reuse he can reuse effects if he needs to um, from the library and then just put it out here and then um, just place it wherever he wants. So this makes it super, super uh, fast and you don't have to reanimate stuff. So here are some things uh, that, that I wrote down. Um, it's for saving objects and animation, I, I stated that already. It stores all of your assets. So this isn't only just symbols, it, it stores images, it stores sound files, video files, etc. Um, most of the time you're going to be using just uh, symbols, but uh, if you want to import images and stuff, it's going to save the image here and um, you'll be able to use those uh, again and again. And um, that's the basic uh, overview of the library. So let's go over to what are the differences between uh, the different types of symbols. Okay, now that we kind of generally know what a symbol is, let's talk about the two main different types of symbols that you can use. And that is the, the movie clip and then the graphic clip. So let's, uh, let's make two, two identical stick figures. All right, I'll just copy, paste this guy over. And then we'll select this guy, we'll push F8 to make a symbol and we'll make a movie clip. So we'll name this guy uh, Stick Movie Clip. And then this guy will make into a graphic. And we'll name it Stick Graphic. And what you'll notice is that these two symbols look identical. Uh, they look exactly the same, but they have different properties because this one is a movie clip and this one is a graphic. So let's put this one over here and this one over here. And then let's just go down the list and then see if we can spot out the differences. First, a movie clip, you can only preview with control enter. And then the graphic, uh, you're able to view a live preview inside of your project. Um, this, this has to do with animation. So remember before I had that two frame animation? So let's, let's go inside this movie clip let's make an animation for him uh, we'll just we'll just make him go up and down like a jump okay so here's a jump animation for this guy and let's go inside this dude and then let's animate him too and then he'll be he'll be jumping okay so the so now we put in animations for both of these uh, symbols. And then let's see what happens. So if we play this, you'll notice that the movie clip doesn't do anything, but then the graphic clip it plays out on the live feed when you when you you know when you push play. So this is what uh, this is essentially saying is that a graphic clip you'll be able to see a live preview of what's inside uh, the animation inside of that symbol, but in a movie clip it doesn't show the preview. Um, it's just the way how Flash works. Um, so this, so that's like the main difference between the two. And then if you go down to the second, uh, a movie clip loops indefinitely, while a graphic clip, you can control how it loops. Um, so let's click this and let's go to the properties menu. And you'll see here uh, this loop uh, option here. And it's automatically set to loop, so it'll loop the animation if you play through it. So see how it's looping the, the two frame animation, but you can actually just do it so it plays it once. So if you play it now, it just stops on the last frame. So he's like stuck jumping in the air, right? And also, if you highlight this, you, you can select the frame of where you want the animation to start. So if you want him to start jumping. On, on this on this frame instead of the first frame you can set it here so or you can just have it 
so it's not animated at all and it just holds the position on frame one. So if you select that, then you can see even if I press enter, um, it doesn't play out. So you have a lot of control animation wise for a graphic clip. When a movie clip, uh, if you click this, there's no option for uh, playback. So a movie clip will just indefinitely uh, repeat forever, um, no matter what frame it's on, even if it's on just one frame, it'll keep looping uh, in the preview. Okay. Oh, but then you might think that's a kind of like a disadvantage for movie clips. Like why use movie clips then, right? So here is the reason why is uh, movie clips can utilize filters while graphic clips cannot use filters. And what a filter is, is I'll show you. If you select any kind of movie clip, so select any movie clip, and then there's a tab here called filters. So if you have this selected, push this little uh, plus button and this will show all the filter options in Flash. And this is essentially like just effects that you can uh, apply to a movie clip. So here you can do like a blur. Let's try out the blur. And you'll see that he's a little bit blurred now. And if you have him selected, then here there's options of the blur. So you can increase how much it blurs on the Y axis and the X axis. And uh, you can see how it, it affects the movie clip, right? And then let's, if you can push minus to delete that, and then you can add a glow, which is another popular one. You can select the, the color of the glow. Uh, let's pick like a yellow, and then the blur of the glow, like how far out it goes, the strength right here. Um, and you'll see now he has a, a yellow glow. So you can see how a movie clip has advantages on general effects and, uh, and other things like a blur and all that other stuff. So. You can kind of play around with the different uh, the different uh, filters that a movie clip has. While as a graphic, you can't use filters. Uh, it's grayed out, so you can't use any filter-like uh, effects on a graphic clip. So after talking about these main differences, um, here are some examples of what people would use for movie clips and what they would use for graphics. So, so more people would use movie clips for like particle effects or any type of effect that you want to use filters for. And then um, a lot of people use movie clips um, to make their weapons because weapons, you don't really have to uh, worry about the animations or anything. Or if you want a fancy glowing weapon or anything like that, then uh, weapons tend to be uh, movie clips. And then, you know, like what I said before, effect loops like um, like fire, if you want some kind of fire effect um, or just any kind of uh, effect thing um, would be, usually be under a movie clip because they want to utilize these glow filters and like the, I don't know, like blurs and all that kind of stuff. Whereas for a graphic clip, since you can kind of um, see the animation inside of a graphic clip playing on your timeline. Um, most people would use this for uh, like animation loops uh, of like their main character or anything that, you know, kind of requires you to see a live feedback of the animation inside that uh, symbol. So stuff like uh, movement loops, like a run loop or walk loop, um, you know, People also group entire animations together uh, just so they can move it around and reuse it and uh, other stuff like that. And there's also stuff like lip syncing where you have to kind of, uh, uh, you know, choose different frames inside a graphic clip so you can see it on the live feed here. So yeah, those are just a few examples of uh, different ways people use a movie clip and a graphic. All right guys, so now that we kind of covered the differences between a movie clip and a graphic, I kind of want to do like a pop quiz. Uh, don't worry, if you fail this, then um, I'm gonna hate you forever. So uh, let's just look at this animation here. Kind of uh, this like six, seven frame uh, run loop here, and it kind of stops. So um, the best way to use this is, what do you think, would it be a movie clip or a graphic? Remember what we talked about before, when it, when it comes to movement type of loops, you want to use 
That's right, you wanna use a graphic clip for this um, run loop here. So let's just select these frames. You can copy paste frames into uh, uh, movie clips, by the way. So the way to do that is you can uh, highlight the frames here. Let's right click and go to copy frames. And then if you go to insert, you can actually do new symbol, which is control F8 as well. And then you can um, just make an empty symbol here. So let's make this a graphic. So let's name this uh, graphic run and then push OK. And you'll see we're inside of a empty graphic clip now. And then you see the, the timeline reset again. So like, you can go into this timeline, go to right click and then paste frames. And then that just pasted the frames that we copied over. So now this run loop is inside of this graphic. So if we go back to scene one, and then this is the original one. So let's just hide this one for now, make this a guide. Uh, I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna put, go to the library. See our a graphic that we just uh, made is right here. So we're gonna drag this over. And then now if you uh, play it back, you'll see that it's it's a run loop and then you can see it on the live feedback. So if you wanted to like animate this, we would just have to move him sideways to, to make him run. So uh, let's just you know, push F6 to kind of uh, see where he's moving and then open up the onion, the onion skin tool and then we can kind of move the foot placement to see where he's going. So you can see how this is a lot faster than uh, having to redraw every single frame for this front loop, right? There you go. And then you know he's he's continuing to move over here. So uh, right here we're really quickly utilizing this graphic clip to animate a lot faster and to reuse you know just six frames of animation um, to make a, a good run cycle, right? So let me just finish this up really quick. And he's just running across the screen. You see how fast this is? This is literally just taking me like five minutes to make this stick figure run uh, from one side of the stage to the other. Okay. So now if we play it through, the, the graphic is still being animated, but then we're only moving the sideways position for it. So now see like he's running and um, we've used this graphic clip to its full potential in that uh, we used it for a run loop and then we kind of just moved it sideways. So, and we did that in like what, like three minutes, you know? But if you did it like traditionally, it would probably take like 10 minutes or something like that. So um, if you think about this in a larger scale, this will actually save so much time for you when you're animating. Okay guys, so here's the second example, a uh, pop quiz for you guys. If you fail this, I'm just going to stop making tutorials forever. So let's just play this animation. This is a little effect animation that I made here, it's like kind of like a particle sploosh going on. And there's also a little sword here. So what do you think these uh, things should be uh, made under? Well, first time I said graphics, so pretty obviously I'm going to say movie clip, right? And But I'm going to tell you the reasoning behind this. So since this is an effect, Let's, uh, let's do the same thing that we did before. Let's copy these frames. Let's copy. Go to uh, insert a uh, new symbol or control F8. We'll call this a sploosh. And then we'll make it a movie clip. So this, res this goes inside of an empty movie clip. And then we're gonna right click paste our frames here. So now it's inside of this movie clip. Go back to scene one. Um, let's hide this original one. And then um, let's make a new layer. And then bring this movie clip down here. So now if you play it, nothing happens. You don't see anything. Because, uh, like we stated before, you can't preview a movie clip inside the project. right? So it's just going to be normal. But if you hit Control Enter, let's hit Control Enter you'll see that it plays 
in the preview, right? So you know that it's there and it's animated. But then what you can do is utilize the movie clips uh, special properties. So let's, let's, let's add a filter to this. So you'll click this, go to filter and let, let's put like a glow on it. So let's pretend this is kind of like a spark effect. So we'll kind of, we'll choose a yellow color and then um, we'll make the strength like, you know, 300 and then we'll keep the blur at like, uh, let's do like seven. So now um, you can see that it kind of applies this glow, but you can't really see it. So let's, uh, let's control enter and see what it looks like. See now it's like this yellow uh, spark like effect you can see, right? So here we used the movie clip to its full potential by using a special property in the filters where we add a glow and then we um, make this make this effect look a lot better than it than it usually is. And um, so we'll put this over here for now. And then this sword too, right? Since this is kind of like a weapon, we kind of want to reuse this for a, a different animations in the future. Um, so let's uh, select this and make this one a movie clip. We'll just hit, hit F8 while selecting it. And then we'll name it sword, right? And then now it's a movie clip. Let's just move this over here. And then we can kind of, uh, let's apply an effect for this one too. But let's, uh, let's double click inside of this and let's try something a little different. Instead of uh, just applying the, the movie clip from the outside, you can actually go inside of this movie clip, select this again, and then push F8 again to make another movie clip inside of this movie clip. I know this sounds pretty like Inception, but um, just bear with me here. Let's name this uh, Sword Glow and push OK. So now you have another movie clip, but this is, remember, we're inside the sword movie clip right now, but then uh, we can apply glow in this one. So let's let's kind of, uh, let's apply a glow here. Let's make the sword look pretty cool. And we'll, we'll say like, um, oh, this is like an evil sword or something. So let's make it have like a red glow, right? And we'll make it like, 200% glow okay but then um, let's animate it by um, doing some kind of uh, like a flicker effect right so let's kind of uh, copy this frame over by f6 and then uh, change the filter here let's make it like have 10 and then kind of like a 100 glow a little bit less of a glow so now this this sword has a two frame animation uh, for the glow, so you can see that this will technically be animated. So let's go back to scene one, and here you can't preview it; it's just you can only see the first frame. But if you control enter, you'll see that this this sword now has this animation embedded inside of the movie clip, and you can see that it has like a flicker effect. So now we made this weapon look super cool. And uh, the cool thing about it is that you can animate it now while, while it has all these effects embedded inside of it. So you can kind of just, you know, move this, have this like a swoosh effect. Uh, let's, let's animate this really quick just for fun. So we can just have this doing like a cool, you know, whooshy, whooshy swing. Right? All right, so it has like a, you know, we'll just do like a little chopping effect. And then if you control enter, it still retains the, the glow properties even if you animate it. So this is another advantage of why, you know, people use weapons and convert it to movie clips it's because you can make the weapon a lot cooler and have like certain effects and glows inside of it. Okay guys, so now that I kind of showed you uh, how we utilize some of these movie clips and graphics, I kind of wanted to put everything uh, together in, in like a real life situation. So I'm gonna kind of make this small animation uh, for you guys and utilize everything that we kind of learned today. So let's say here, so here I have the same animation. This is the run loop from before. 
um, here's that sword and then I also made like this kind of weird you know I made the swinging animation for the stick figure right so um, let's try to piece this together utilizing the movie clips and the graphics that we learned earlier okay so first of all I'm gonna do the same thing what we did with this sword is I'm gonna convert this to this sword into a movie clip so let's name this sword and then I'm gonna go inside of it convert this to a movie clip again Actually, yeah, yeah, we'll do that, we'll do that. Sword Glow. And then we'll put a filter on it that says, uh, we'll, we'll do like a yellow glow this time. Do a yellow here. And then we'll animate it, have like a flicker effect again. have a stronger glow this time then a little bit extra blur so we have this thing going on right but uh, let's go a little bit further and try to make this have like this cool um, I don't know <laughs> I'm just gonna add some kind of weird shape that you know that makes it look a little bit extra cool so let's say um, say it has like an extra little sword appendage coming out of it. Like this. I'm on a new layer, by the way. Let's put this on the bottom layer. I'm gonna copy this and then flip this over. Right, and then uh, we'll kind of uh, we'll kind of animate this little portion too. Where we're gonna push F six, and then I'm gonna kind of move this like over here, make it like a. <laughs> I don't know if this is any practical for a weapon, but uh, we'll kind of move it in a little bit. So now it's like a it's like a little scissor sword that has like these little sword appendages coming out of it or something, right? So. Um, now we'll go back to scene one, and we'll know that this sword is animated and has this this loop going on inside of it. So we'll save this later. And then uh, for these stick people, let's convert this thing, this uh, this run loop from earlier. Let's make this into a run loop. So we'll go to insert new symbol graphic, name it run loop, and then push OK. I'm going to paste this run loop inside of this graphic clip. So now we know that this animation is embedded inside the run loop graphic clip. Right? And then this other guy, he's doing like this sword swipe loop. Let's convert this. Actually, um, let's animate this sword now first. So let's kind of... Uh, put this sword over here and animate this sword part. I'm gonna move the rotation axis to the hilt here. And then let's just animate this really quick. It's gonna be doing some cool swipes. Gonna bring it back up. Another swipe right here. Goes up. And then just bring it back down here. So here's the, the general animation here. So, oh yeah, and then another thing is, we'll kind of group, you can group multiple layers inside of 
uh, graphics too. So let's highlight both of these layers, the sword and then the stick figure layer. Copy frames, insert new symbol, uh, make it a graphic and we'll say uh, stick, stick swing loop, okay, push okay. And then let's paste these layers here, paste, paste these frames. And then you'll see that this sword loop animation is inside of this graphic. Okay, so now we have this stick swim loop here and then the run loop inside of our library. So let's kind of uh, hide these for now, these animations. And then I'll make all these guide layers so we can't, we don't see them in the, uh, the final preview. So what I wanted to do was make a new layer, utilize this run loop in this library. We know this is a run loop. You can actually preview it by playing in here. So let's drag this here. And let's kind of animate this guy. So he's like running. He's running over here. Making sure the foot placement is right. Let's, uh, let's continue this animation. Uh, let's extend some of these frames out right here. And then we'll put this swing loop after this. So we'll put a keyframe here, highlight that, and then drag this over. And then he'll just do like a sword swiping, uh, sword swiping loop thing. So we'll just leave this to, to let it loop, okay? And then we'll extend extend these frames out. Oh, and uh, let's let's take that sploosh uh, spark animation that we did earlier. Let's just copy this and then paste it in here. Um, let's like put it. Oh, let's just put it inside of this movie clip. So we'll uh, we'll go to this uh, swiping one right here. All right. And then we'll put the sparks in here. So like in this hit, we'll paste this uh, sploosh spark effect right here maybe. Sounds pretty good. Uh, let's put some space in here so it doesn't start looping. And then the upward slash, we can put another effect. Copy and then paste it here. So it goes like an upward direction. So uh, let's see how that looks. Oh my god, that looks amazing. Let's kind of let's reposition this so it looks more. Alright. So um, let's go back to the main scene and then let's play it out. All right, there you have it, guys. So um, yeah, that's a pretty cool animation. Like this is like you see, we just we just took like a few uh, of the stuff that we made today and then we just applied it and we made this pretty cool like combo animation. He runs into the scene. And then he has like some kind of weird electric uh, scissor sword thingy mobobber and then now he's like freaking shooting lightning bolts out of uh, his sword. Um, so you can see the power of, of the movie clips and graphics when you're using these uh, in, in the right way. Um, so I just kind of wanted to show you guys uh, just a few examples that I used here today, but there's literally hundreds and thousands of different ways you can use movie clips and graphics don't let this tutorial just limit you on your ideas, but think of it as like, this is just the tip of the iceberg and there's there's so many different things I can do with movie clips and graphics um, if I play around with it and, and then get used to uh, what, what both of these do. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this animation uh, and this tutorial. 
Um, it, it, I'm gonna give you guys homework and just tell you guys to play around with movie clips and graphics, play around with what they do, uh, what doesn't work and what does work. And, um, and I want you guys making uh, like these cool things that no one has ever thought of. So uh, j just by utilizing these and, um, and to help with your animation. Hey, thanks guys for watching. Um, I know I haven't been uploading a lot of tutorials or animations lately, but you know, it's, you know, I, I have no excuse. But you know, I'm just gonna say that I'm super busy working on dojo stuff. Um, but you know, you'll you'll see me around doing a lot of different projects. Uh, I got I'm juggling a whole bunch of different things right now. So um, thanks for thanks for sticking by my channel, guys. Um, you know, it's, I'm. I'm I'm really grateful that I've gotten this many followers, uh, even though I haven't uploaded much. Um, but I'm kind of I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm planting seeds uh, for the next generation of animators is what I want to do. <laughs> so, you know, once I get too old for this kind of stuff, then you know, like ten more, ten, twenty people will take my place and entertain you guys uh, for years to come.